What's going on gamers? Today we're going over how to install Tinker's Contract onto your client and your server. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell in order to stay updated on all of our Minecraft videos. Tools and weapons are a huge part of Minecraft in that they're pretty much how we get anything done. Whether it's breaking blocks, fighting monsters, or even tilling farmland. It's what we need to do pretty much anything in Minecraft. But the basic ones can get kind of boring. Introducing Tinker's Construct. This guide will give you the information to get started with this mod. And we're gonna get started right now. To install it on your Windows browser, you first need to head to your Google Chrome and type in Tinker's Construct. Then you're gonna enter the CurseForge link that appears. Once that's loaded up, you're going to first actually hit the mantle because this is a mod that is dependent on mantle. You, once it's loaded up, you're gonna hit files. Then you're gonna scroll down to where you see recent files and select the view all on the right hand side. From here, you're going to select the all versions button and select the version that you'll be using. Today, I'm using 1.12.2, so that's what I'm going to do. Then once you see it, you're gonna hit the orange download button. If this appears, you're going to select keep and not discard. It won't break your computer, I promise. From here, you're going to go back to the main page of Tinker's Construct and click the files button once again. Once that loads up, you're going to go ahead and go back to the recent files tab and select the view all once more on the right hand side. Once that loads up, you're going to click the all versions tab, scroll down to 1.12.2 or whatever version you may be using, and then hit the orange download button once again on the most recent version in 1.12.2. The download will begin once again, and if it says keep or discard, hit keep once again. From here, you're going to want to type in your search bar in Windows, percent app data percent. A file folder will appear, and you're going to click on the .minecraft folder that goes with it. Next, you're going to scroll down to where you see mods and select the mods folder. Then you're going to click and drag both of the jar files into that mods folder, and then you'll be good to go. The steps to download the mod from the browser are the same on Mac as it is on Windows. So go ahead and take a look at that in the Windows section. And then once you're done, you can come back here to learn how to install the mods onto your computer on your Mac. From here, you're going to go to your go tab and click go to folder at the bottom. Then you're going to type in library application support minecraft just like that and you're going to open up your mods folder and you're going to open up your downloads folder and what you're going to do is click and drag both tinkers construct and mantle into this mods folder once you've clicked and dragged both and you see that they're both in the proper folder then you'll be good to go to install it on your server you're first going to need to make sure that you're running a Forge server, something that works with mods. Make sure that you're running the proper file and jar file field. I'm running Forge 1.12.2. And then you're going to stop your server with the red stop button. Once the server has stopped, which may take a moment, you're going to head to the left hand side and select the FTP file access. You're going to select that. From here, you're going to enter your control panel password, or if you have a cached password, you're going to just use the login button. Next, you'll scroll down to where you see the mods folder. From here, on the left-hand side, you're gonna click upload once more, and then you're gonna open up your file folder where you have your downloads and click and drag to add files in the add files section. You'll see that they start loading up, and once both of the files load up to 100%, that means that it's downloaded and then you can head back to the server name by clicking on your server name up at top and then hit start or restart to restart your server. Once you load it up in game, you'll be all good. A common issue that we face is that the server will get stuck loading sometimes and this is a pretty easy fix. All you do is click on the console on the left hand side and what you're going to type in is slash FML confirm. Once you hit enter, a few things will run on our end and once the server is loaded back up, it should be good to go. Now let's cover a little bit of the mod. Once you first enter, you'll notice that you have a book called Materials in You. 
and you can see that there's an introduction to pretty much everything that you'll need to know to get initially started. But in this tutorial, we're going to be going over just how to do most of this stuff anyway. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is make the most basic thing, which is the blank pattern. All this is, is two sticks and two planks of any kind. You're going to take those two and you're going to put them in the crafting bench like this. This will create the blank pattern. And this is basically the most basic thing that you're going to make in all of Tinker's Construct. Next, you're going to make the stencil table. And this is created by putting a blank pattern on top of a wooden plank. The stencil table is useful for creating the stencils that you need from the blank patterns. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different options. Next, we're going to create the part builder, which this is kind of the next step. And that's a blank pattern on top of a wooden log. And the part builder is the creation sort of aspect of the Tinker's Construct. You put your pattern that you would want, and then you put the materials in, and then you would create whatever pattern that you built. Next, you're going to build the pattern chest, and that is just a chest underneath the blank pattern, like so. And all you're going to do is be able to put the patterns that you've created from the stencil table in. Next, we're going to go over the tool station, and you need a crafting table placed on the bottom of a blank pattern to create it. The tool station is kind of like a crafting table, in which you can see the recipes that you need and required materials that you need in order to create a pickaxe or a shovel or anything that is in there. From here, we're going to make the smeltery. The smeltery is made of grout, which is made of sand, gravel, and clay. Now, you're going to take that grout and you're going to place it in a furnace to cook it up. And once it's completely done cooking, it's going to make what's called the seared bricks. And you can see I have those in the bottom of my inventory now. And the seared bricks, you got to make seared brick blocks, which can be made just like nether brick. And as you can see, that's the seared brick. And that's the most basic block that we need in order to create the smeltery. From here, we're going to make the smeltery controller. This is basically the brain of the operation. This is how you know that you're doing things right, and this is where you control what you're making. Next, we're going to create the seared tank, and we actually need a piece of glass for this. So what you're going to do is build the ingots like a furnace, and then put a piece of glass in the center, and this will create the tank. This is where you add all the fuel sources to the smeltery. This is where you put your lava bucket, for example. Next, we're going to go over the sear drain, and this is where your melted down ingots would drain from. This is the fluid output section. Next, we're going to create the seared faucet, which is the actual outlet for the seared drain. This is what allows the molten fluid to come out of the smeltery. Finally, we're going to make the casting table, and this is where the fluid will be able to safely fall from the smeltery. You're going to put that underneath the faucet, but you'll see that in a second. So. This is the smeltery, and this is the most basic version that you could probably make. It's two by two on the inside, but it's hard to tell sometimes. And you see these walls are on the outside as such. Next, you're gonna place the seared tank down here. Then you'll place the smeltery controller down right there. And if it lights up, that means you're doing it well. Finally, you're gonna put the seared drain, then the seared faucet, and then beneath that, the casting table. And this is the smeltery. Now we can go fill up the seared fuel tank with the lava buckets. And as you can see in the smeltery controller, you can see the fuel is filled up to the brim. From here, you can take any blocks of whatever ingots you have and place them into the smeltery and you'll see that they start melting. Now we're going to talk about the tool forge, which is like the upgraded version of the tool station. So you'll need a tool station first, and then you're going to need three seared bricks. So go ahead and make three of those fully seared bricks. Then you're going to need four blocks of iron in total. So the way that you craft this is you take three of the seared bricks and place them on top of the crafting bench. Then you put the two iron blocks on either side and a tool station in the center. This will create your tool forge. And this is essentially just the upgraded version of the tool station. So you see you have the basic here in this tool station, but then you have the more advanced tools in the tool forge. Well, that's pretty much it. Tinker's Construct is one of the most popular and interesting mods in Minecraft. With a variety of tools and depth of customization, it's sure to give anybody a lot of playtime and change the way that you look at tools and weapons forever. 
hopefully you found this guide helpful and that'll just about do it for this video. As always, I hope that you have lots of fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.